I'm John Bowden. Here's part one of our conversation with Canadian music legend Mark Jordan. Being a big drummer fan and a drummer, worst drummer you'll ever meet, by the way. Um, okay. a- any thoughts of uh, Jeff Beccaro? Anything you can share with us? Jeff was always the light in the room. And he, it's so odd that he should die young because he was the one who was so alive. And he always, he was so kind to me. You know, I was like a guy, I was like a shitty guitar player. I wrote good songs. They flew me out there. I'm sitting with all these guys who are like unbelievable players. And I, you know, and I remember... I played, you know, I'd never play, I'd never played in the studio before. And I was playing, and 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 I remember uh, Jeff going, "Get Jordan out of my headphones," because <laughs> because my time was so bad, right? And I, I I didn't know how to play with these guys, and they were so great, and they were so generous and so wonderful to me, and uh, I, I I'll tell you, I love Jeff, and I remixed something years ago uh, from the Mannequin record. And I heard Jeff speak between takes on the two-inch. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) But I heard Jeff talking in the studio. And that was about 10 years ago. It was just wonderful to hear his voice because he had been dead for a while, right? And uh, it just took me back. And uh, he, he was a Lovely. I, I just can't say enough about him. He's just a lovely guy. Uh, in 92, I was in L.A. when it happened, and I've only been to L.A. like maybe five times. And I remember I was at some tourist place, and I cried, uh, mm-hmm. and I couldn't believe it. I thought, how can he be dead? It's, it's like a John Lennon moment to me where I'm going, he can't be dead. It, it can't happen. How? Yeah. So. Well, it was a freaky thing. I mean, it was just that uh, it was... Uh, just some allergic reaction he had to him. We met in 93, and we were, uh, we were touching on it on Facebook uh, when Bruce Hornsby came in. Uh, and I'm not sure if you came in first, or he, I think you came in first. Uh, but it doesn't matter. But uh, And I love seeing that picture of you two. You had known him. You had met him fi- face-to-face before or not? Oh, yeah. I did a demo with him many, many years ago. I was signed to Warner Brothers, and Bruce had come to L.A. with his brother. And they were writing songs, and they were fantastic. But it was bad timing for Bruce because punk was starting to happen. And and Marty Cohen, the guy who signed me to Warner's, uh, he loved Bruce, and he wanted to get... He was a, he, he was a you know, a, like a talent guy at, at Warner's. And he, he wanted... Um, Bruce on the label. And so he asked me to do, come in and uh, sit with them while they, they did these demos. And we did did demos. I think Mandolin Rain was on there. But early, they were demos to try to get Bruce onto the Warners. And that's where I met Bruce. And uh, I loved his music. I was, I'm such a fan. And then, oddly enough, as I said, punk was starting to happen. I lost my deal at Warner, but I ended up on um, on uh, BMG. And um, the, uh, the, the Paul Atkinson, the head of A and R at BMG, uh, heard Bruce and signed it against against everybody's uh, advice. He signed Mister Mister. He signed Bruce. And he signed me, and uh, and he he had a monstrous success with with uh, Hornsby, and you know Hornsby is he's he's like the consummate musician. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. Look at the and, and I, I'm always amazed that I mean the guy can do bluegrass. He'll be you know Ricky Skaggs. He'll do bluegrass, and he'll play. You know, with one of the Marcellus, but but he just does so many different things. I mean, his independence is insane as a piano player. Yes, and and well, he told me he still he still practices every day when he's on, not on the road. I mean, he practices, um, and he's very very uh, dedicated in in that in that sense. He's a, he he is in total command of that piano. 
he'll, you know, you go and see him live. I went to see him at Kerner Hall, which is a beautiful theater, by the way, in Toronto. It was just him, but he'll do Mandolin Rain. And for the solo, he'll seamlessly go into a Bach fugue. And it is so seamless and so beautifully played that you're, you realize you're, you're in the presence of a master here. This is a guy who has mastered what he does. And mastery is where, where it's at. Like it's something, you know, I could never get to that level of musicianship. He is just dedicated and he's brilliant. Well, I, last time I talked to him, I was on the phone. I think it was he had just had his twins work like adults now. And he told me at that stage in his life, he was practicing five hours a day. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Like, where do you have yeah. the time? He says, well, now I'm going to have ki- I have kids, so I can't do that as much anymore. But when I'm on the road, I might be able to. And I went, what? Seriously? Yeah. No, I'm telling you, he is a dedicated cat. This ain't your first rodeo. You've been doing this a lot of years. Do you do you still have that hunger to to find those songs to collaborate? To, do you still get as much from it now than that you did, you know, in in the late seventies? I get more. Really? Um, yeah. I do. You want me to change my shirt? No. Strobing out. Um, Not from this end. From this okay. end, it's good. All right. Um, no, I enjoy I enjoy writing songs more than I ever have. I just I'm, I just love it. I can't wait to get up in the morning and work on uh, work on what I do. And uh, you know, I'm working on I'm working on writing a song with Rod Stewart now. And we're long distance. You know, he's all over the bloody world, and and it's uh, it's so much fun. I get to work with all these great, you know, because of the internet, you can you can sort of work long distance, and it's oh, it's brilliant. More from Mark Jordan coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden.